Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Polk. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing fine. That's I really good. have nothing else to say. <laughs> hey, you know what? Fine is, fine is, is good. I will, I will take that. <laughs> doing better than vision. How about we'll say that? Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> Doing better than Vision, doing better than Wanda. <laughs> yeah, I do miss having a Batwoman episode to discuss tonight. Yeah, yeah, but well, you know, I, I know Black Lightning is premiering tonight, so we are getting uh, additional shows back. And then, of course, um, of course, we had the second trailer for uh, Superman and, and Lois, which it seems like they're completely like rebooting the, that, that character <laughs> from what right. we've seen as Supergirl. Um, yeah, yeah. So that, 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 it's gonna that's be February is going to be a weird month because by the end yeah. of it, a lot of the main show mainstay shows are going to be back mm-hmm. for what has been the longest hiatus ever. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. oddly enough, we managed to fill the time with content. So we did, we did. <laughs> <laughs> we have stretched, we stretched our podcasting muscles. <laughs> yeah. Um, some headlines before we get into WandaVision, because, dear Lord, how long can we talk about WandaVision in that episode? Um, Watchmen scriptwriter Stacy, you you just put this in here without any forewarning that I have to pronounce this name. <laughs> you, saw, you, you saw that you read the story over the weekend. You like retweeted it. So I, I, figured you... really, I, I, I like it. <laughs> Trust me. OC. Okay. For okay. listeners who are unaware, if Sarah retweet, retweets something, it does not mean she read it. <laughs> she <laughs> <was in> the <laughs> headline. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, I think her name was in the headline. I can't recall from the Della. Yeah, but anyway. <laughs> OC Kafor. Kafor. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. OC Kafor. Yeah. Um, named to write the screenplay for the upcoming Blade movie. She was on, wasn't she in a certain writer's room? She was. What writer's room? For she was in- okay. Okay. Let's yeah. let's go back. Okay. Stacy. Oh, I see. <laughs> see now I can't pronounce the name. OC Kaffer, who is from the Watchmen Writers Room, is named yep. to write screenplay for the upcoming blade movie yep i dear i hope to god blade doesn't become the shazam of marvel <laughs> no 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 I, I i was thinking it would be something more like more grounded marvel Oh yeah, I I w- I'm not saying I'm not saying genre. I'm saying more okay. of we were promised Shazam in 2014. Oh, true. <laughs> all right, true. I mean, sorry, I'm not. I didn't mean. Sh- I am all over. I'm really thrown off right now. I'm talking <laughs> about um, Black Adam. Oh yes. Yeah. No. And also yeah. in Shazam news, Henry Cavill will <laughs> appear. <laughs> You want to you want to start over? No, <laughs> uh, I don't no, want to okay. go back. I can't go back. I, it's already been done. Well, it's already been done. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, to your yeah, to be fair, there is yes, uh, Cavill's not going to be in Shazam too. Uh, but yeah, going back to going back to Blade just for a quick moment. Yeah, she was in the uh, writers' room, and I guess it's, you know, I guess what's notable about about this is she's the the first African American woman screenwriter for any of the Marvel films, and then of course we know um, Nia DaCosta is you know black, first black woman director, and of course we have Ryan Coogler who was you know, obviously Black Panther. So you know the MCU is 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 getting getting a little a little more diverse behind the camera. I just. I'm so fearful of these headlines. <laughs> no, I, when I saw the headline that said this, I was, I was very happy because we both know Watchmen, mm-hmm. excellent written series yeah. to say the least. I mean, above, like that is almost, that is pretty much a perfect season of television. So, totally. I I was I am thrilled about this. I just again like things to happen sooner <laughs> than later. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of it kind of does worry me that they got Mahershala 
Mahershala to sign without a script, you know? Yeah. Like, huh, interesting how they they casted that guy before even just telling him what he'll be doing. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, I mean, you sign a talented writer like this, and I'm, I'm sure it's going to be really good. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, the, it, the MCU at this point, we're, we're so deep into this franchise that... Uh, they attract they list talent left and right so i think if you're an actor at this point you can you can sign a contract with them knowing that you're probably going to get some pretty good material to work with you're not gonna they're not gonna put you out there to (laughs) to yeah to fail yeah they 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 don't like to repeat mistakes twice (laughs) no definitely not (laughs) <laughs> I mean, Thor one, Thor two. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they learned. They course corrected very quickly. Third one. <laughs> Third one's the charm. Um, yep. <laughs> all right. In other news, MCU related, according to Luminod Nerdy, that's a horrible name. Sony has offered Keanu Reeves the role of Craven the Hunter in the new Spider-Man movie villains solo spinoff. So, so he's going to be first in his own solo movie. Yeah, Is that yeah. what you say with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I think you know, Sony has been like, obviously, they've had the you know, well, Morbius delayed again. Speaking of things that will never may never see the light of day, uh, and also, uh, of course, we we we've had you know Venom one, and of course, Venom two is on its way. So yeah, so I think they're obviously working through uh, the various Spider-Man villains and, and of course, Craven's the next one out. Obviously I haven't seen anything beyond this particular fan site report this, but they've, they've apparently had a pretty good track record of like stuff. So we shall see. I mean, it's just said it's been offered. So, you know, this is one of those things where it's like offered, meaning like, oh, yeah, I heard, I heard my friends say, you know, Keanu got offered this role. So, but I have seen it, I've seen it reported in, in several, several spots, you know, sort, you know, u- utilizing this particular uh, source. So maybe, maybe we'll get a, a confirmation later this week. So, what is with this slash Tom Holland on Andrew Garfield? Comma Toby McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all, we're doing show. We're doing show prep oh, as we record. So I, Tom Holland, over the weekend, I guess like last Friday, he had had an interview with Variety where he had um he had had an interview talking about Spider Man Three and then also his other film coming up. Um, yeah, and. So the you know they asked the question about you know of course Tom's all, you know notorious for like spoiling stuff so uh, it, they asked him about you know casting Andrew and and, and Toby have they been seen on set and he was like I if if they have been I this is news to me so he kind of downplayed it uh, in the interview but uh, he did say that that this particular Spider Man film is the the most ambitious of the. A, bit, a very ambitious film that they're that they're putting together. Yeah, well, <clears throat> the cast list certainly sounds ambitious. So, yeah. and all of the hype now with all of the rumors circulating, it's like y- you better if you're not going to deliver this, then whatever you do have in store better be on par. So, n- which Spider-Man? I don't know if we want to get into that, but I I just it's. Whenever Spider-Man happens, it will happen. We'll see it. We'll assess from there. Um, Golden Globe and SAG nominations came out. Did you uh, get a chance to look at the list, Will? I did. I did. Yeah. I, I did. I was just. I was. I was waiting for you. I was waiting for you to to give your your thoughts on any of them. I. So, I looked at both lists. I think that it's it's interesting. One film that stuck out to me was, um, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but um, Mari Marian Marian yeah. mm-hmm. Mari, and and I've heard a lot about this film, and I'm very excited for whenever I get a get to see it. But um, it's interesting with the Golden Globes; they 
they kind of just stuck it under foreign language film and um, neither the leader, leading actor or actress um, got nominations from what I could tell. Yeah, I couldn't tell um, that, yeah. But in Stag, they did, and their mm-hmm. ensemble got nominated, and the movie itself got nominated. So it's just it, like that, that was a big difference that I noticed. Um, yeah. Yeah. Along with a few other things, but. Yeah. Yeah. I know with, uh, I guess, the other, I guess, in the best picture category, to, in addition to, to that one, um, I guess the Globes had like The Father and Mank and No Maland and. Uh, Promising Young Women, of course, Trial of the Chicago 7, but then uh, uh, the SAG Awards had Ma Rainey's uh, Black mm-hmm. Bottom and The Five Bloods and, and One Night in Miami. Yep. Uh, and so the only one that had was in both Best Picture categories was Trial of the Chicago 7. So, yeah, it was very interesting just to see the, uh, you know, I guess the SAG Awards, you know, they are, you know, it is the Screen Actors Guild. So this is, you know, many of the peers are, are, are the ones who voting, who are making these recommendations and nominations for, for these films and voting in these categories versus the foreign press that does the Globe. So, uh, and to your point about this other, the other Minari, I think as I pronounce it, uh, showing up in the foreign film category versus, you know, the best picture, um, yeah, it's just interesting to see how the, the different the different audiences who who select these awards, uh, you know, make their nominations and stuff. And then, of course, that's, I saw where the Critics' Choice came out today, and it, they had like everything, and they also included um, um, the Sound of Metal. <laughs> so yeah, I I've seen the Sound of Metal. I um I watched Malcolm and Marie over the weekend. Really like that. Mm-hmm. And I um I need to watch Ma, Ma Rainey and I yeah. need to watch Promising Young Woman because Promising Young Woman um <clears throat> I I will I will be a little shocked from what I can tell if, if Carrie Mulligan doesn't get an award. Yeah, yeah i I watched I watched Ma Rainey over the weekend and really really enjoyed it. It's an amazing film. Chadwick was obviously. Uh, great in it uh but also viola davis i mean i mean he, she she brings it all the time to you it was it was really really good really enjoyed it uh and also just thinking at the sag list as far as one night in miami i know we both watched that one too mm-hmm. and um and I, I was happy to see it um uh, see it, it being nominated of course i think regina king was also nominated for best director mm-hmm. i think of the globes and and the sag for for that uh uh, film as well so uh, and I know the SAG I guess has a better track record of like being a more o- Oscar predictor so you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see when we get the Oscar nominations how how all these three other award shows compares to, to, to the Oscar nominations that will that will come later I guess. It just feels yeah. so weird for it to be February and to not even have Oscar nominations yet yeah, it is. It is. I mean, I guess the show got pushed back to April, and then I think the SAG is in April as well, and I guess the Globes is later. Just I guess in a couple of weeks. So, but it yep. does seem weird. Yeah, I don't does- know. I I mean, there's been plenty of times when the when the Oscars have taken place on my birthday, so it's just <laughs> so weird to me. Yeah, uh, it yeah. is February, but March is around the corner. And with March comes Falcon Winter Soldier, who, who dropped a new trailer um, during the Super Bowl. And Will and I, of course, missed the trailer. And so we watched it on YouTube. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, watched it on YouTube. And I, I, I'm i really looking forward to this to this series. Um, yeah, and, and I guess, you know, we... And, it's part of it is it, it, it is I guess more comfortable MCU fair <laughs> maybe than the more conceptual WandaVision but even beyond that uh, just just to see the bromance of, of Bucky and 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 Falcon um, just you know that on screen again and 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 and, and, and you know we get a comic accurate uh, Baron and of course we get the the U.S. agent, which I know they very they like keep 
teasing this character, but they haven't you know shown him yet in any of the trailers. So, mm-hmm. uh, but they keep touching on on U.S. Agent. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if they if they which route they go with with that particular um, character because of course you know after when in the comic when, when Steve retired from being captain um, you know there's two different variations you know one was the U.S. agent was like you know super patriot who was kind of a Homelander esque character <laughs> as far as uh, as far as how he took on the mantle of Captain America and then there was also the uh, you know, other version where he uh, he was recruited by the government and was you know, bred to be like uh, cap and was stronger than cap but um, but but still not as strong as some of the other other uh, Marvel characters so yeah so you know I, I, I really enjoyed the trailer I'd like to hear, hear your thoughts on it I um, I think this should have been the first trailer. Because mm. it showed a lot of my complaints about the original trailer was there was little interaction between between these two characters. And we already mm. know they have great on-screen chemistry. Yep. And it also, <clears throat> there was a lot more action and it felt more on par with what I expected. Um, it was, there's momentum in this trailer that I think was lacking in the original trailer. I yeah. mean, they had the great, the great um, sequence with Falcon in the sky and all of their CGI money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got the movie picture budget. <laughs> but I think with this one, it really, it just felt, it felt very on par with Fast and Furious, <laughs> but in <laughs> a version. I like the moment with Sharon Carter. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you're right, they are holding back, but I need them to hold back because. Yeah. Between both trailers, I already have. I already get the feeling I've seen too much, and um, and so I I don't want them to to show 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 the show what they're hiding. Um, and and I'm looking forward to looking forward to March at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it as well, and you know we'll. Well, you know, WandaVision will will end shortly before, and then there's I keep hearing these rumors that like there's a you know ghost episode of Wanda that may drop a, a tenth episode. So maybe, maybe not. But if there if there is, awesome, because that means we'll have a continual MCU uh, watch and beginning of twenty twenty one. So to make up for what we didn't get last year. <laughs> Yeah, I and I mean it's interesting because someone I know disowned MCU at the very start of this year and was like, I don't like WandaVision. I know, I know. I told and I and I and I also and I said, I, you know, you can hold me to it, and you are that I would probably come back around by the fourth or fifth episode, and now here I, and here we are. So I think. I think why this episode works so much more for me is because I grew up watching old episodes of 80s sitcoms. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the way that they used, integrated these sitcom beats into this episode to um, escalate the dramatic irony from what's actually happening the reality of Wanda and Vision's situation, I I I was completely entranced by throughout mm. that. I, I mean, from the point with the opening song and the creepiest vision I've ever seen, which was vi- baby vision, that it creeped yeah. me out so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's so weird. It was, uh, yeah, it was a purple Chucky doll. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then and then fast forward, and as things are developing, you have that moment where the the dog dies, mm-hmm. which is such a classic moment in those shows. It re- yeah, it really <laughs> is. It really is. <laughs> Oh, to 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 the the best moment 
with with let's let's escalate the situation and then roll roll credits yeah and and the fact that the scene kept going and then they they stopped the credits and they really kept going i was just this is why they decided to go this route and i mm-hmm. just i was so impressed by the way they did this episode yeah i i agree i, I think uh uh, as I, I was telling a, a friend of mine over the weekend, and we were talking about the talking about the show, and uh, the, you know the the I, I got what they did, you know, and I even said at the very beginning, even I was you know very down on it because uh, at first, um, but I did give them kudos for for the for the concept and 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 how they have structured this using the sitcom as a as a means to show Wanda's, um, you know, grieving uh, a vision. And, and now, of course, we see her brother. And, and she really hasn't had an opportunity because, you know, she she did disappear in the blip. So to to really process all the stuff that, that happened um, and to her uh, mm-hmm. from. And so so that, you know, so that. I felt, you know, and I, and I told my friend, I was like, yeah, I, I know those first two episodes were the Dick Van Dyke and the Bewitched vibe thing. And, you know, you know what? I remember watching those growing up and and I thought they did a good I thought they did integrate those into it. But the, but it was a slow burn. But I really felt that the payoff was starting that third episode. And then you're you're, you're right. I mean, I think given that the the 80 sitcom is such still you know is is such a well known trope because you know you're right I mean this is this is more recent in time to us and more and and you know grew up watching these things so yeah there were a lot of just constructs they had in the episodes that really you know with with really showing how Wanda was losing is losing control of Westview. Uh, and, and, and placing those moments into the 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 eighties sitcom c- construct, really, yeah, I mean that was like, you know, was huge payoff for me. Definitely, this is definitely my my favorite, most to date, my most favorite episode of the series. And and um, for all for all the things you, that you that just shared, and you know, can, I, I I really. I really liked how they use Agnes in this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as I mean, not only just from the jazzer size, you know, it, but how each she, how she was sort of that foil because when the boys, you know, first got Sparky and they and she shows up on cue with the with the with the little puppy house and stuff, and 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 then whenever the disappointment and stuff happened and the boys aged themselves up whenever um, Wanda and, and, and Vision were having their dialogue about things. It, you know, what, you know, Agnes being in the room was like, oh yeah, she, 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 know, you know, it reminds us that she, she, she definitely knows what's going on here in this story. Right. And, and, and so, you know, that was one moment. And then of course the other moment when they had the, let's take it from the top, you know, with the, 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 the yeah, you know, the recut of whenever um, she broke she broke character. Whenever Wanda and Vision were having the moment where they're trying to you know sue the Billy and, and Tommy uh, was was another great way to like break character and and remind and 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 use that to show how yes yeah Wanda is controlling a lot of things, but Agnes you know. It, you know, it gives it gives credence to the theory that this is Mephisto who is actually throwing in some wild cards in, in, into this into Westview to to, to 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 mess with Wanda to you know help continue her 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 mental decline. Yeah, Miss Mephisto or Dormammu. I mean, mm-hmm. either one of them could be doing it. Yeah. With with Feige, he never follows these these stories beat for beat so exactly exactly it, it, it sometimes he'll switch out characters so you never yeah. know you got to keep us on our feet but yeah. but you're right i think what they did with agnes is they escalated what was already set up in that previous episode 
where Vision really gets the first hint Mm -hmm. with his neighbors that things are not right in Westview. And I think this just furthered it to the point where he does have a mental breakdown where Mm -hmm. Darcy sends a message and he, he removes whatever enchantment spell or charm are on these people from one individual and here's the pain. Something that I've heard people point out though is in that moment, I think his name is Neil or Norm. Norm. Um, he, he just refers to she. she mm-hmm. he, and we don't know who she is. And so some people are saying it could potentially be Agnes. Right. I've heard um, that. Which, yeah. which I thought was really clever um, and would be a good spin on it, that it's not Wanda in everyone's minds. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's Agnes. Um, something else that I noticed in this episode was the commercials. The mm-hmm. more I look at these commercials, because we got um, Legos paper yeah. towels, <laughs> Lego, <laughs> which is a reference to um, Civil War. Right. And is that I, I, I go back to my original statement about these. I do think the commercials in particular are, are um, Wanda's bubbling subconscious of memories. Mm. Mm. Because whether, and it's also structured in a way where I, I feel like if, if we were to go back and, um, and timeline out all of the commercials, the references, I think, are probably going to be in sequence of the MCU movies. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you had Hydra mm-hmm. in Winter Soldier, and that was a clear reference towards yep. the beginning of the season. Yep. Which, which, correct me if I'm wrong... We first met Wanda technically as an end credit scene in Winter Soldier. I believe so. I believe so. That's yeah. right. Because yeah, yeah, it was because that was before. Yeah, it was before Ultron. Yeah. Yeah. And now we get Legos, and I'm and I'm yes, I'm skipping a whole bunch, um, but I I I think that it might be Wanda's subconscious, and oh. then. Normally we get two. I'm pretty sure we only got one in this episode. So yeah. I think the other um, commercials are potentially either Dormammu or Mephisto, kind of like counter programming. Yeah. Man, if that's true, Will, this is why this show should probably get an Emmy next year. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you're right. It, you, you're totally right. And and yeah, I, and I think you're right as far as the commercials. I, I, these things, these commercials are Wanda, Wanda subconscious bubbling through, and 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 the Legos, because you know, because and and they and they did it very in a very smart way too for folks who haven't followed the the, the MCU as closely as we have, mm-hmm. where it's still accessible to the viewer because at the beginning of the episode, whenever they were at Swords Field headquarters. You know, the the sword director and Jimmy Wu, you know, brought up the whole situation in Lagos. And so, you know, so that way, you know, so for an uninitiated, you know, whenever we, you saw the commercial down the road in the episode, you would be like, oh, OK, you can, you know, if, you, if you're if you're a, a real discerning viewer, you, you'll you be able to you know pick up on that 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 point that. Oh, yeah, that's, you know, the whole mess of things <laughs> happen, right. you know there but for us long time you know fans of the the universe uh you're you're right i mean i think you you have really nailed the the point of these commercials which is there are points along the way in that we've seen from their introduction to now um and it it will be it'll be interesting to with the upcoming uh remaining episodes as as we get other commercials uh, you know, I guess thinking of, of things next and as far as as far as Wanda, I guess there'll be uh, I guess we'll have Germany as far as the yeah as as far as the next I- issue that comes up and then and then of course we'll see the events of uh, in, you know in Infinity War and maybe something else too uh, that I'm blanking on. Yeah, I I don't I don't know, but. 
we got more in store, but I want to talk about Wanda because Wanda, yeah. Wanda does so many different things in this episode. And as much as Vision is having this epic breakdown and realization that not only things are not right in Westview, but things are not okay with him. Um, mm-hmm. That that line he delivers, I can't remember who I was before Westview, is chilling. It is. Um, but to c- counterpoint that or juxtapose that, we have Wanda who goes from constantly in this episode switches back and forth between um, her sitcom self Mm -hmm. versus Wanda, I am trying to keep everything under control. And then we actually see, I'm just going to say it, Scarlet Witch. We like true Scarlet Witch fashion. And, And when she breaks through the barrier, and and start speaking in her infamous accent. And I say yep. infamous not because it's good, but it's just, it's the accent. <laughs> it's the accent, yep. <laughs> We've been looking for the accent, and here it is. <laughs> yeah, and, and the fact that they are smart enough to, to hint at X-Men in that mm-hmm. scene. Mm-hmm. Because of the parallel to the first X-Men movie with Magneto and yep. the police. I just, I couldn't believe it. It was so cool to see it. And then retrospectively to align, um, align it with that moment in Mm X-Men. It was like, hey, this is, this is beautiful. Like this, to go back to your point, Will, I understand these references completely. (laughs) You love (laughs) me in the first few episodes, but A, I didn't grow up with those sitcoms, and B, th- those were really, really far-reaching Easter eggs, um, yeah. very ingrained in the... But we're, like, as the decades are growing, it's becoming more accessible, which I think is fascinating. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder uh, what that says. Well, I think that, that, I think that says the, 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 the brilliance of the storytelling of of this and you know and some folks jumped on board i think a lot of it was yeah i think some of us is fan brand loyalty some of us who um you know like i said when i was first when we first started talking about this you know wanda and 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 vision weren't like he you know characters that i really really gravitated towards in the MCU originally. So yeah, it took me a little bit of, it took me a little bit of time, but because of like you said, the familiarity of the use of these more recent sitcoms really and and, and and using those tropes to build on the bigger ish the bigger thing that's going on as far as Wanda and her control and her, you know, reanimating vision and uh, and using using the interesting thing that has that I, I hope they really touch on is why sitcoms is, is the is the 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 method that that Wanda is using to 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 deal with her trauma. Because mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I, I, and you know, now that Darcy and Jimmy, you know, I think, and we'll probably, you know, we'll probably get it some, you know, in some exposition from Darcy and maybe from 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 Monica whenever she has but, additional interactions, you know, what, what was the driving force for why Wanda picked sick? Why, why did Wanda pick sitcoms? I mean, were they watching them in, you know, Sokovia or, or did she, or, or did she envision, was this one of the things they bonded over at X-Men headquarters? Cause you know, we had those scenes when, was it in civil war where everybody else went off? Uh, yeah, yeah, pepper yeah. wash. They bonded over cooking. I, there, you're you're forgetting though the possibility that Wanda didn't choose sitcoms. Mm, true. Whoever is pulling that other string, I mean, we we not only saw Scarlet Witch in that one moment when she breaks through, but there was also reference to her securing taking Vision's body, mm-hmm. and. At that point, that did not look like Scarlet Wish or Wanda. That looked like somebody being controlled, almost like a zombie. Mm-hmm. But then again, I mean, there's so many different 
pieces of dialogue to break down with that because they mention how Vision made it a point where he didn't want his body to be used right. as a weapon. And I think it's fascinating that Sword had his body and was mm-hmm. dismantling it for all we know to get the code. So I don't know. It's just yeah. Sword, Hayward and Sword not looking too good right now either. They're uh, not. They're not. With, yeah. And, and then what I really liked was that conversation. Is she a terrorist or is she grieving? Mm-hmm. Um, because, the, and that's something that they really, with all of Wanda's actions throughout this episode, they really made it a point to make sure you recognize that she, yeah, she, on one hand, she does have all of these people in this in this state and is keeping them held hostage and has interrupted their lives very much like Thanos snapped a bunch of people out of existence and interrupted their lives. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the same time, she is mentally unstable with the amount of grief and loss and, and just this, this, this life that she's, she's led where she, she doesn't, she, she maybe found herself, in the comfort of the wrong person. Right. Yeah. And I could, yeah. Yeah. And and that's, that's a very good point. And to your, you know, to your counterpoint with my wife sitcom, the sheep, you know, she pick it. Maybe that is the counter programming that, you know, who is, who really is pulling the strings here, uh, is, you, you know, utilize the sitcom construct to, to help her deal with, with all the, the loss that she, she, she's, she suffered uh, mm-hmm. from you know losing vision and losing her brother and 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 all the all the all the other situations that we've we've seen replayed in the co- in the commercials now. <laughs> yeah, I mean we're we're talking about reality mm-hmm. and we're talking about Wanda's power power based is manipulation of reality. Mm-hmm. So to sitcom seems really logical to me just because. That it is escapism. It, it is, is. It is a w- and and the, what they went after is she was in love, and had her her heart. She had to literally rip her heart out of herself in a way. Mm-hmm. With what she had to do to vision, and and so she found solace in this idea that well, if I make everything like it is on the TV show, then all can be right. We can have our disagreements, but. We'll always resolve the issue. We'll always yep. learn our lesson and move forward. We'll have that normal, quote unquote, life. Right, right. And that was a very interesting point, you know, with her, with the with the with the, the twins with their sons, mm-hmm. you know, because you know she's she's trying to deal with this escapism, or or someone is trying to help her escape from the the loss that she has suffered but then you know whenever you know dealing with the story with sparky and of and then you know when agnes brings sparky out of the you know the azalea bushes and again i think this is you know it gets to this point about you know agnes being the manipulator (laughs) because right uh but you know really forcing wanda to you know address the reality of the situ- of the she's dealt that she, that she's trying to escape from because you know the boys are ready to age up again to, so that they could uh, escape from from the loss of the dog but then Wanda and in, in in this situ- case maybe the real Wanda is coming through and just like no you you've got to deal with with loss you can't just wish things away and this you know this is a you know well of course Jimmy you know, obviously, uh, you know, has a little throwaway line to the Zagovia Accords about, you know, it, it being prohibited, and, and and maybe Wanda holding on to her sense of right and wrong, and knowing, you know, and, and also knowing the lessons from Civil War that Cap and and Tony had, you know, fought over the Zagovia Accords in that film. Um, you, you know, she she's trying to impress that upon her sons that hey, you know. There's some there are some thing, lines that we shouldn't cross, and 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 maybe she's also trying to just reconcile what she's done reanimated vision. Yeah, 
Yeah, I see. See, th- this episode, even when I say, well, the ending really s- sold it. I mean, that that scene you just described was was a great moment. The scene before with Vision and Norm, a great moment because <clears throat> the escalation of reality finding its way to vision and Wanda and realization of this isn't right. This Mm -hmm. isn't how things are. We are doing something wrong and, and, and trying to say, Nope, we'll, we'll try it again. We're, we're going to re redo this take because all is right. And I am happy and I want to keep that at all costs. Yeah. And is was was just like they walked the perfect line, and and you you're like I I I love that moment I love that moment when it's but but and I even feel like one of the kids says, but you bought Fitz back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so it's just the and the horror of of it. And I always think when I was watching this episode in particular, I always thought about. Those moments, there are episodes in a lot of those 80s sitcoms which go really dark. Mm-hmm. And in a place, and, and it's always this well-known episode, and you're kind of like, oh, what really happened? Um, and they never touch on the subject again, but I I think, I I, I wonder if, if Feige was just like, okay, so we just got to get them to the 80s. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 Really blow shit up. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yep. Our demographic, our audience is like they're gonna know this, it's gonna be familiar, and this is when we're gonna drop all the shit on them so they can really like, oh, this is why you did this in the the, the 60s and the fifties and sixties and seventies. Ah, right. now we see why. Because right. yeah, yeah, because I'm I'm that viewer. I am there. I you know, I, I was I was not on I was not feeling it at first. I like I love the concept, but I wasn't feeling it. But now I am, and and you're right. I mean, I think those 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 shows did go to dark places, and 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 then, you know, and the get back to your point about the, the credits rolling, when Wanda was trying to make everything right again. Well, when Vision was like, I can't remember my life before Westview. I can't, you know, I. You know, you know, and 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 why are the other children in Westview? That was another important like yep. point that he that he raised, uh, trying to deconstruct what's going on here. And mm-hmm. then and and then of course Wanda does the you know the the, the credit flex, but it um, you know but, you know Vision comes out of the kitchen in his natural state and uh, his normal state and. And to see the two Avengers about to throw down, <laughs> it was just like, all right. Yeah. And then yeah. they're interrupted with the ring of a doorbell. Mm-hmm. And like it's typical sitcom. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's the brother. Yeah. The recast. The recast. Yeah. Breaking, <laughs> Breaking that fourth wall again. <laughs> Darcy. Love Darcy. Darcy is kind of just sitting back and like, Feige, you screwed me over with those Thor movies, so you better make it right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I yeah. didn't care much for her character before, but she's really doing a great job in this this show. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, yeah. I, I just and and I didn't I didn't pick up on that. Like they they crafted in such a way to your point, classic. They end and you think there's going to be. Like the tension is ripped with with the ring of a doorbell, and suddenly something else comes to mind. But I also this episode and even the the previous few, it's all about the twins and mm-hmm. the real remembrance that she was a twin, and mm-hmm. this isn't just about the loss of Fitz, but the loss of Pietro. Mm-hmm. So the fact that he comes back, and and I know, I know, there's all these rumors that it's not Pietro, it's also not Quicksilver, it is Mephisto, um, which which I think is interesting. Well, I, you know, I think, you know, whenever we were joking about, we were stumbling our way through the news earlier about Spider Man and the multiverse, and I, you know, I, I I had that I was really thinking that. I, the four, you know, now 
the wall is broken down between Disney and Fox. I mean, now that and and the whole you know getting real world for a moment. So getting back into the comic world, you can build. You can have this happen now because yeah. remember, Far From Home takes place after this show mm-hmm. as far as in the MCU timeline. So I was thinking about this because, you know, we, we, you know, when we saw homecoming, you know, we, you know, at the end of, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen far from home, you know, we, we see Peter meeting J Jonah Jameson from the Sony films. And so, right. So I about that because it was a decade ago. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we got so I'm thinking now, well, you know what? It makes sense that if we that you could have Toby and, and McGuire show up or Andrew show up because timeline wise, when you open up you know you know this this you know, thinking about how this movie is going to spin off the Doctor Strange, but also thinking about, you know, now that we got the timeline of this that we know it's only nine days or so after the blip. You know, we, 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 the multiverse, this is our introduction to the multiverse, at least in the MCU world, you know, and and to to, to those characters, even though, you know, we saw it real world and far from home to these characters. Now we see the multiverse. And so I think you can have Quicksilver from the X-Men films come over and they introduced the X-Men this way. And also, you know, and also, you know, tie in. Magneto being their their parents mm-hmm. because yeah. you know no because, I I think and, and, I think you're, mutant, you're right. yeah yeah I think you're right that there a lot a, it's probably not Mephisto it's probably is quick Quicksilver um and they're doing the cross the universe or the multiverse but I. I don't know where I was going with this. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I just think random things. Yeah. I just, yeah, it is what it well, is. No, I mean, you know, there's, I'm just thinking through all the things we've learned, like even at the, the Disney investor, you know, with spinoff and a couple other spinoffs. Oh, that, I know what I wanted to say now. That with, the, with the drone. Yeah. With the start tech and stuff. So yeah, go ahead. That, that Evan Peters was the best cast S- X-Men. So I don't want all of the other X Men from that franchise. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I hope they do recast them. And Jennifer Lawrence isn't going to do anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know the little drop, the little line about the Fantastic. You know, with the airspace engineer, you could have, you know, you could have uh, Reed Rich- the Fantastic Four. I mean, Reed Richards. So I mean, there's any number, and, and you you can do recast with some of these. With with if you bring them into the MCU with you know, with the multiverses have our own version of them, yeah. But you know, yeah. But you know, but you know, with with Quicksilver from the X Men verse coming in, the Sony verse coming in, you know that that introduces the mutant gene to to the MCU now. That you know you can turn that you, you have that option, and, and and the other thing too, maybe that's how on some level Wanda recognizes him. This this little theory theory spiraling there hadn't done that in a while. <laughs> you went all in. Um, yeah. <laughs> you already disowned the show, so <laughs> <laughs> I went from disowning it to like I'm throwing crap out there now that probably won't happen, but you know we'll see. <laughs> you know there was the whole Olsen thing last week too about the Luke Skywalker esque um, spoiler, you know, uh, character you know, surprise showing up. So I, I you know I don't I don't think this is that level, but. So we still have more to more to come. Yeah, there's there's definitely a lot to come. I mean, I we got a few more episodes, and they're all going to be twenty minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. On that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me at Will M Polk W I L L M P O L K. You can find me at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. But most importantly, rate, subscribe, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>